Well, good morning, students. It's Thursday morning, and this is when we typically would be having our Thursday morning chapel. But I know that you're not here. You're on spring break, having a wonderful, delightful time with your family. I'm sure it's absolutely awesome. Or maybe this is like the most epic senior prank of all time. I don't know. But here's the reality. Once again, you're not here. And boy, we sure wish that you were here. But since you're not I began to think, I'm still going to give a chapel message this week, but maybe we can get a little bit of a change of scenery. So why don't you take a little bit of a walk with me? Let's go for a walk. Almost there, just through this door. Wow, this is the locker room where all the great pregame talks have ever been given. You might be wondering, what are we doing in the locker room? We're in the locker room because come Monday morning, it's game day. The competition's rolling up into your inbox otherwise known as remote learning. And there's a couple things that I've got to tell you. Number one, I got three points for you again. Here's number one, you have to prepare your mind. You got to get your mind into the right mindset. It's got to be a little bit of a mind shift. First Peter 1, 1 actually says, prepare your mind for action. You know, the Christian life is not one that should be passive, sit on the sidelines, we allow time to just pass you on by. No, you got to engage. In fact, 1 Peter 5, verse 16 says, redeem the time because the days are evil. We got some bad stuff going on around here, like a virus. So you got to consider how you're going to use your time. You got to use it to your very best of your ability. We call that stewardship. Take what God's entrusted to you, which will be your relationships, your resources, and your responsibilities. And in your day, which is 24 hours, you don't have any more, you don't have any less. Make the very best of the time that you have. You got to lean in. You got to love the challenge that's before you. But if you're not prepared for it, you're not going to be ready. In fact, there's a saying that goes, the will to prepare to win is more important than the will to win. Let me say that again. The will to prepare to win is more important than the will to win. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to raise a championship trophy. Everybody wants to get A's. But you got to prepare your mind for action. You know, it's been said that success is 80% psychology and 20% effort. And we're going to get to effort in just a minute. But that 80%, that learning growth mindset, that begins right now, well before Monday even rolls up on you. So when Monday does roll around, you're going to be ready to hit the ground running. And it's going to be great. So some of that preparation actually begins Sunday night. Go to bed early. Set your alarm clock. Get yourself up. Take a shower. Get something good to eat. And then be sitting there like, come on, teachers. Bring those assignments. You and me. Let's go. Bring me your best. And don't bring any of that weak sauce up in here now. You know, Ecclesiastes 9.10 says this. Whatever, and that's a pretty comprehensive word. Whatever your hands find them to do, do with all of your might. And Colossians 3, 23 says, whatever you do, do it heartily. That's like with all of your heart as unto the Lord and not unto men. So come Monday. Yeah, Monday's game day. So prepare your mind. Will your mind be ready come Monday? Because Monday's coming. And if I know my students, which I'm pretty sure that I do, you're going to be ready, and you so got this. All right, after you've already prepared your mind, here's point number two. Create a great game plan and get started. Now, you might be saying, well, hold on. That sounds like two points. Nope, can't separate the two of them. They have to go together. You know, there's a great passage in Luke 14 that says, somebody who wants to build a tower, when they first sit down and consider, do they have the resources that they need not to get started, but to actually be a finisher? Or who wouldn't sit down first before going into war and say, do I have the guys to beat those guys? A stopping, assessing the situation. Count the cost. For example, for us, it'd be like, how long is this going to take me? What do I need to do to get this done? What's expected out of me? Figure out those things first. Don't just rush into that first assignment. Develop a great game plan and then execute. And that's the point. A great game plan is only as good as you're willing to execute. So be purposeful. Be on target. Stay focused. You know, in 1 Corinthians 9, the Apostle Paul talks about, I don't run around like someone running aimlessly or box the air like someone just beating the air. No, that's not how to live the Christian life, and it's not the way to study. Be disciplined. Be on purpose. Create a great game plan. Set great goals, and then go get it. But don't get overwhelmed at the collective amount of work in front of you. 
the first thing is to actually get moving. You know, if you're standing at the base of a mountain, you say, boy, I sure would love to get to the top of that mountain. How do you get there? You take the first step, you take the first step. So start tackling that first assignment. Get moving on that assignment, then tackle the next one. And you can do this. You don't need your parents beating you over the head. Come on, get going. They've already put in their time. This is your time. And if I know my students, which I've actually already established that I actually do, this is where you're gonna shine. All right, for point three, we gotta start moving. We're gonna take a walk because we need another change of scenery. Almost there, just have to head through this door. Oh, yes! Here in the weight room, this is where the real work happens. Look at this stuff. Woo! This is where sleeves have got to get rolled up, jackets got to come off. Let's go! All right, well, here we are in the weight room. Let me give you my third point. Be relentlessly persistent. You know, there's a great passage in Galatians 6, 9 that says, And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap or benefit if we don't give up. I understand at first this might be a little bit tough, but you're going to feel great in the end. You know, I took my family to Oak Mountain State Park, and we did a little bit of hiking on Sunday. At the end of the day, one of my boys said, Dad, it feels great to be tired at the end of the day, knowing that we've done something of significance. And you know what? I know this is going to be different, and there's going to be some small bumps along the way, along the way, but don't trip over the pebbles. Don't sweat the small stuff, and don't let it get the better of you. Grab hold of it. You can do this, and don't give yourself a choice. The choice to put off an assignment, the, the choice to sleep a little bit more, the, the choice to take a shortcut, the choice to choose a path of least resistance. This is a multiple choice. you got one option. Offer your very best, your first fruit, until this is done. And you nail this thing. Now for some of you, this might be a total breeze. You're like, I totally got this. And for others of you, you're sitting there like, Dr. Brown, you are crazy. And, well, there may be a high probability that there's some truth to that, but that's actually not the point, actually. The point is that some of you might actually find some difficulty in this. And the question is, when you come up against some difficulty, what you're going to do in that very next moment is what's going to matter. You know, Muhammad Ali once said, I don't start out counting sit-ups. I only start counting when they start hurting because those are the ones that matter. So when things get a little difficult and they get a little uncomfortable, keep pressing through. I mean, think about it. We're three-fourths of the way there. We're almost the end of the year. So in summary, let me give you three things again. Number one, prepare your mind. Be ready to set goals and get started. And then be relentlessly persistent. You can do these things. I know it. I believe in you. We love you. We're here to serve you. We've been praying for you. And I know, I know you're going to be awesome at this. You got this.